right now mm. with your business, obviously your mission is to help more people feed their pets raw food. What are the biggest challenges mm. you're facing? So education and scaremongering, those are the biggest challenges for sure. I mean, people, there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of, you know, you guys see this in your own world of doing this. There's, it's like a religion, <laughs> you know, people have very passionate opinions about why you should or why you shouldn't. And, you know, there's just, everyone's an expert. Um, <laughs> so it's just really, I, and it has been, it's getting, it's getting easier, um, but it's still a, a, a huge um, amount of work to be done to educate people on it. Um, you know, there's a lot of word of mouth power with, with a product like raw. I, I think people try it for themselves with their own dogs and then they, you know, see the results in like two weeks time and they want to share it with their friends or the people they meet at the dog park. And it, it just, it's, it's really exciting when you try a product like this and see the results, you really want to share it with people. Um, I think that, you know, the challenge, you know, related to the education and the fear mongering also can come from the vet community. Although I have to say we are seeing such a shift in this area and it's so exciting. Really? Um, you know, yeah, we really are. We're having, we have a lot of vets that contact us that want to work with us, conventional vets too, not just holistic Wow, vets. that's wow. very cool. Um, yeah, it's really cool. We have vets that not only support us and recommend us to their clients, but they feed their own dogs our food and have, wow. you know, we just did an interview recently with with one of our clients who's a conventional vet, and you know she talks about how you know she wasn't taught anything about raw in, in vet school, but you, she uh, had her dogs in like agility training, and she was seeing all these other you know dogs who are athletes, and they were all fed a raw diet. And she's like, maybe I need to like look into this. And her dogs have been suffering from IBD, and she switched them. They're both one of them never like he would leave his kibble for like twenty four hours, wouldn't eat it, and now they're both thriving no longer have any IBD symptoms. Um, she's just like a huge proponent. So it's really exciting to have these vets actually reaching out to us. Um, yeah, and you know, the consumers are driving the trend. They're, they're pay their clients are coming in and being like, this is what my dog's eating. The, the dogs are in amazing shape and health and their blood work is great. So it's cool to see that it, there is a shift. I can feel it. It's palpable. It's, it's, it's really awesome. Um, so that's happening. I would say to more specifically a challenge that we have with our product or, and, and probably a lot of raw companies have this, is the transition to raw is a very delicate, mm. <laughs> yeah, you really have to be able to hold the hand of the pet parent through that process. Because what happens is people start from a place of fear or uncertainty and so if anything goes wrong at all, or like yeah. not wrong, but if there's any, like if it's anything but perfect, it's really easy to like be like, whoa, this isn't right for my dog or there's bacteria or the food. It's, it's, it's really easy for them to um, give up quickly. So we're, our challenge is trying to figure out a way to educate people during that process, be there for them, walk them through it, even, you know, have raw experts that are getting on the phone with them, you know, no, it's normal to have loose stools or it's, you know, normal for your dog. You know, the other thing that happens in the transition, especially if you're switching a dog from kibble or cooked to raw is that the dog might turn his nose up at it at first because it's totally different than what they've conditioned, been conditioned to see as food, right? It has a different temperature. It has a different taste. It has a different smell. There's organ meat. The organ meat is very strong smelling to, to dogs. So it's also getting people to be patient and persistent in that process and not give up. Um, personally, I just, we rescued a dog um, last August. He came to us, he was two years old and he had been on a um, famous kibble, I won't name the name, but a not very good quality kibble. And I, of course, immediately was like, I'm switching him to our food. Um, and the first week he was like, what is this? He did not, you know, he was turning his, no, he only wanted the dry kibble. Um, so I did all the top, you know, I was adding goat milk. I was heating it up a little. I was adding some, you know, canned sardines. Um, and you know, he had loose stools to, to during the transition two weeks after he is now obsessed with the food <laughs> has perfect small. I mean, it's just, and, but if I hadn't had that background and I had, you know, been fearful of it, I don't know if I would have stuck with it. You know, you might just say, this isn't right for my dog. So that transition period is really important. And um the challenge we're having is getting people um 
you know, the advice and the support they need during that time so that they don't immediately give up, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It makes yeah. total sense. And to anyone watching this, if you are transitioning or thinking about transitioning your dog, you're probably going to run into some diarrhea. You're probably going to run yeah. into a food that your, do your dog doesn't like. I mean, we feed yeah. either a, mm -hmm. a, a DIY diet or we feed, we feed mm -hmm. raw. And Harper and Cooper, <laughs> I mean, we've talked about this before. There are yeah. a couple recipes they do not like. They will not yeah. touch unless yeah. they're mixed with other stuff. Yeah. And I truly think yeah. that's a direct product of feeding them kibble for like the first couple years of their life mm -hmm. and not feeding a lot mm -hmm. of other foods. Yeah, not a lot of variety yeah. at all. Yep, and so this was obviously before yeah. we learned about all of this, but I've heard from many different experts that if you feed your dog a single food, probably regardless of what it is, honestly, they will be picky to other new foods because they're just used to that one single thing. So even if you decide yeah. to feed, we and feed raw, feed all the proteins if you can. Do a, do a healthy <laughs> yeah, rotation, you, you know? Yeah, for sure. And like, you know, again, if a dog doesn't like a certain protein, that's okay, too. You know, you can try it, you can mix it with some other ones. And, um, you know, but you don't have to, it's okay for dogs to have preferences. But we, we really like to, you know, remind people that dogs, they will not intentionally starve themselves. They're not like yeah. cats, you have to be much more careful, but they will eat <laughs> when yes. they get hungry enough. And, you know, if, you know, you, there's steps and tips and tricks that you can do to entice them. But, you know, if you just know that this is the right diet, I'm going to give it my all and really try it, then, you know, it usually does work. Um, but, you know, it's it can be scary for people that don't have the background. So I yeah, even so, yeah. still get really nervous about a lot of things like you when you were talking yeah. about just a few minutes ago, something or memory popped into my mind. It was like a couple weeks ago and I had dishes in the sink and Bryce was about to put the cutting board and knife from we feed raw into the sink and I was like, yeah. wait a second, I want to get the other dishes out. And he goes, yeah, it's, it's no different. <laughs> Not that and then I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. okay, you're right. I was like, so I, know. Even I still have those thoughts where I'm like, <gasps> well, and people don't realize, you know, when handling raw meat, when handling we feed raw, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. you want to, you want to have, you know, specific utensils. You want to wash your hands. You want to clean up. There's definitely steps you want to take. But you should be doing that with your kibble too. That's what nobody's yeah. telling people is like yeah. your kibble yeah. has the same, like has similar bacteria or different bacteria, but it still has mm -hmm. bacteria. Kibble gets recalled for salmonella. Mm -hmm. If you're touching your dog's kibble or you're touching your dog's bowl after they eat, you should be washing your hands. You should be changing their bowl every time. It's really no different in terms of how safe you should be. It's true. It's true. And I think people don't wash their hands as much with kibble. And, you know, I know that kibble is a much bigger. Yeah. So it's like, but, and I think people are tend to be a lot more careful when they're feeding raw. And again, you don't have to wear a hazmat suit. You don't have to fear mm -hmm. for your life. Like it's so... Mm -hmm. I mean, I, and you're right, Kenzie. It's like, you still have this, like, oh my gosh, like this is, but people don't do the same thing. We, we have to remind people, it's like, how do you prepare your own raw meats mm -hmm. for your family before you cook it at home? It's really no different. Um, and, you know, we do, you have to purchase from a company that uses, we use only human grade USDA, you know, certified meats. We produce in a USDA certified facility. You're getting a very high quality <laughs> product. Bef and it's HPP. So it's even another step than like what your yeah. the meat that you're buying at the grocery store goes through. So um, there's really, I think because, you know, you're also putting it in a bowl on the ground and, you know, your dog can get it, you know, on the surfaces around. I mean, you didn't have to be cognizant of the fact that you're feeding a raw diet, but it really doesn't require that much more work. You don't have to fear for your life. You don't have to worry that you're going to, you know, make your whole family sick. It's, it's really not hard to feed raw safely um, if you're buying a good product. It's really not. So back to what you were saying a little bit about one of the challenges you're facing is mm -hmm. uh, the fear mongering. Like I said, we had the mm -hmm. episode with Dr. Billinghurst a couple days ago and he told us something we had no idea is, you know, to preempt this story, vet schools, the reason a lot of vets recommend kibble, at least from our knowledge, is they're taught this in vet schools. You know, a lot of the textbooks are sponsored mm -hmm. by the kibble companies and the kibble companies donate lots of money to get teaching time in front of, you know, young, impressionable vets. But Dr. Billinghurst let us know that there was a Hills Pet Nutrition graphic going around that was like toxic foods for dogs. You know, you see those all the time. Oh, no, he just saw mm -hmm. this on their website. Oh, on their website. Yeah, recently. Oh, my gosh. They oh, list wow. classics, chocolate onions and raw mm -hmm. meat as a toxic <laughs> so ingredient to wow. a carnivore. 
I mean, oh, yeah, that to me, crazy. you know, I think Hills is probably going to be around for a long time, but th they lose all their credentials for me just based on that, you know, and many other things. I but I mean, it's so weird that that's even, it's so strange to me that that can even be believed by people who know so much about, you know, an animal's well being and, you know, physiology. Yeah, their anatomy, <laughs> um, absolutely. All you have to yeah, do is really yeah. look at their mouth, to be honest. Yeah. I know it's really crazy. I mean, I, I think we we're also very careful to not be like anti vet because right. vets are great. I mean, there's it's not really if you weren't taught about nutrition um, in vet school, that's like it's okay. It's like you know, it's not. I think Dr. Karen Becker again talks about this in the Forever Dog. It's like it's not really. They're not trying to tell you to do something wrong, and and we really. I know people love to go down the path of, oh, well, they're making all this money off of like the kibble that they're promoting. I really do think that there's just like, it, it's a flaw in the system that Agreed. they're not taught about nutrition and vet school. And then, you know, they also see the bad side of like raw diets, right? They see people coming in with poorly concocted homemade raw diets that who knows what those are. I mean, we have people all the time, they can't I just feed hamburger meat or like, no, that is not even close to a complete and balanced raw diet. And our food, when, you know, it looks like, because it's all ground together, you know, all of the, you know, the bones and the, you know, organ meat and the muscle meat, it looks like hamburger meat, right? <laughs> people really, so I think that vets see the bad side of, of raw diets, they also, you know, wonder how they, it's, it's straight, this is becoming more, um, the HPP, the HPP raw and raw that's, you know, put through this cold pressure process, vets are becoming more aware of it. I have noticed when I, you know, read any sort of articles about raw that they'll now say, well, if you're using a brand to make sure that it's HPP. So, but I, I think there's still a lack of knowledge about it. Like if, if your issue is with the bacteria, then like, you know, that there's, ways that raw companies are addressing that. Um, and there's also, you know, ways that they're addressing, they're making sure that things are, are complete and balanced. So I think it's just a lack of education in the nutrition portion yeah. of, you know, caring for animals. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still, I get more shocked by like the sort of very angry, um, vehemently anti-raw, Mm -hmm. that's it's like are you not even willing to like open your mind to you know you know another way um so so yeah uh it's just uh i think it's a battle that will be sort of like fighting for a while but it is changing yeah and it makes sense that we we totally agree and you know a lot of people even in our comments section say oh vets recommend this because they want your dog to keep coming back because they want to make more money or they recommend this yeah. because they get kickbacks and in reality like Nobody's going to go spend eight years in school to yeah. willingly harm dogs. It is just yeah. they are sharing what they've been taught. And like you said, you know, yeah. wh wh what you said in the beginning about people switching to raw food and saving a lot of money on future vet bills, that feeds into that argument that vets probably yeah. don't see a lot of the quintessential raw feeders. And, you know, like even yeah. us, we feed raw, but we don't go to a conventional vet. So we go to a holistic vet. So it's still really conventional yeah. vets aren't seeing a ton of – the raw feeders, they're seeing the ones that are having issues with trying to do it themselves or whatever it may be. But one argument yeah. that always is hilarious to me, and I I still see this like probably three days ago I saw this. People say, yeah. don't feed raw. It's not balanced. It's like <laughs> it can be. Yeah, <laughs> ba know, balance it and then feed it. <laughs> oh, I know. It don't feed unbalanced raw, right? But like it's, it, it's really – it's just – not a lot of um, thinking, I guess, sometimes and people hear, I mean, yeah, it can be imbalanced if you don't do it right. Um, right. You know, but yeah, it, it's an interesting sort of conundrum. I think that we, raw companies have to deal with this, you know, the, I don't know, just we even have clients that say we go to our vet, but we don't even tell them that we're feeding a raw diet because we don't want to deal with like yeah. them, you know, criticizing us and i'm like no tell them though because your dog is so healthy <laughs> like, i know right the more that's that no like, don't <laughs> keep it to yourself but it's true like what you're saying like a lot of they're either not going to the vet as often as the kibble feeders or um you're just not even talking about it with your vet when you're going so you know they're not learning that this this is working but yeah 